The Creation of the American Pitbull Terrier Audiobook, Joseph L. Colby Part 4 He has produced some promising pit dogs, three of which will see action next year. Colby's Twister Cub in 1903, Sire. Colby's Pincher, Dam. Colby's Roadie Pit Weight. 54 pounds bred and owned by John P. Colby, Newburyport, Massachusetts. Twister was victorious over Jim Moberly's Big Boy in 42 minutes, at Boxford, Massachusetts, on November 19, 1906. A. Exke's Jeff Cub in 1918 Sire. Shepherd's Black and Tan Dog, Dam, Galtai Bitch Pit Colby Weight. 42 pounds created by John P. Colby, Newburyport, Massachusetts. Property of Mr. A. Exchave, Mexico City, Mexico Champion of Mexico Sordito vs. Exchave's Jeff Exico, The Land of the Sun, Parties, Bullfights, Cockfights, Dogfights and the home of that once famous Mexican champion, Sordito. Sordito was recognized as the champion of Mexico and was announced, open to matches for $1,000 or more, by Octavio Lariva of Mexico City. He was a white dog with cropped ears and had a good strong punishing jaw, deep chest and a strong heart. He had won official matches and was entitled to be called champion. During Sordito's reign as an arena idol, supporters of his were challenged to a contest taking place in Mexico City. Mexican pigeon fanciers were curious to know who owned a dog that would make a competent opponent for Sordito. It seemed that no one dared to challenge the champion because his apparent playability and fighting ability were never in doubt. The acceptance of Sordito supporters for a match, to be held in Mexico City, generated considerable gossip among pigeon fanciers and everyone was looking forward to the event. The man who issued the challenge, that he had a dog, to face Sordito, was Senor A. Exchave, who was a member of a prominent family in Mexico. He was deeply interested in hunting dogs and had held many contests. Won a competition with a dog known as Jack de Colby. This 42-pound dog defeated a 47-pound dog known as Boy in 45 minutes in Mexico City on April 29, 1920. The dog Senor Exchave proposed using against Sordito was a brindle dog named Jeff and was purchased from John P. Colby in December 1921. Jeff was sired by Shepherds, Black and Tan, who was the son of Colby's Black Pete, Ex Colby Misery, a daughter of Pincher. Jeff's dam was a Colby Galtai bloodline and was descended from an imported Irish breed. Jeff was the type of dog that could wear a heavy chain loosened from its bonds in no time and was constantly pulling for him. He was the assassin type which is only created once in a lifetime. When the day of the battle arrived, the spectators were and came running to the side of the pit. They gathered from far and near, traveling by any means of transport available. Interest in this battle was high and approximately 300 people had gathered to witness the inevitable downfall of the challenger, Jeff. The well was built with adobe bricks and had a circular shape. It was built especially large to accommodate all spectators. As the dogs were weighed and the handlers given instructions on the rules, the video cameras clicked constantly, filming scenes of the crowd and the principals. When the dogs were taken to their respective places and released, one of the greatest battles in the history of dogfighting began. Both dogs had been expertly conditioned and were in excellent shape. They were being handled by unparalleled experts. When they were released, the two advanced towards each other and met in the middle of the pit. Sordito secured the first strike and for a few minutes he took advantage of it and gave Jeff a lot of punishment. Jeff broke the hold and, in doing so, held the nose, 
but the skill and cunning that Sordito was known for proved to be too much for Jeff and the hold was broken. As the battle continued, Sordito took the lead and was sorting Jeff out. He threw Jeff several times with damaging results, but Jeff boldly and boldly took the fight to Sordito. As the battle neared the hour mark, Sordito had lost some of his spirit and from that point forward Jeff completely defeated Sordito in both bite strength and skill. He defeated Sordito and at the end of an hour and thirty minutes, Sordito called a foul and refused to continue. Jeff was declared the winner and announced as the new champion of his class. It was a popular decision and victory. Motion pictures of this battle were shown on screen in all parts of Mexico and the battle itself was discussed for many months afterwards. Miller Buddy vs. Breedings Tom by J. M. Corrington, referee Readings Tom was a dog that Chaz. Smith of St. Lewis had tried and scored, not good. He presented the dog to Robert Breeding, of New Berlin, 111 and told him that there was some scapegoat in it. Mr. Breeding messed with the dog for over a year. He had taught him, tested him, and come to the conclusion that Tom was a fighting dog. To prove it to his friends, he challenged Mr. Miller of East St. Lewis to fight his dog buddy and the fight was accepted, to be held at Staple Tom's Road in April 1935. Buddy was the victor of some tough battles, a few lasting more than an hour. Miller and the Gashouse Gang, St. Louis Boys, believed that Buddy was guaranteed the fight before it started. With that in mind, they brought in a lot of money to put into Buddy. As the time approached to put the dogs in the hole, there was a big fight over an umpire. I was finally selected to officiate in that position. Buddy's sponsors would take any bet of any amount that Buddy would win. The dogs were placed on the ground and after one hour and thirty minutes the boys from St. Lewis were ready for a draw and it was clear Buddy was on his way should he not be pulled out of the pit. Of course, it wasn't my job to advise, but, by the way, my son was acting as a timekeeper, and I told him to tell Mr. Miller that it would be a good display of sporting ability to catch his dog and not let him lie in the pit to die, because of the game. Mr. Miller did it at the end of one hour and forty-eight minutes. There was not a turn from any of the dogs during the entire battle. Now, after winning that match, Tom was still astray in Chaz's mind. Smith and reasoned that the dog would not itch so they brought in another dog, and Mr. Breeding consented to try Tom to see if he itched and believed me. He lunged for the other dog without hesitation. After witnessing this, Mr. Smith was a sick man, because he had branded this dog a rancid stray and given him away. Buddy's supporters left, a little wiser but with less money. Breeding Tom was handled by a Mr. B. Beers and Buddy by Mr. Kyle. Leeming's Butte produced in 1901 Sire. Colby's Tiger, Dam. Colby's Thistle Pit Weight. 35 pounds created by John P. Colby, Newburyport. Massachusetts. Property of Harry Leeming Butte was victorious over Jim French's yellow dog, in 35 minutes, at Rowley, Massachusetts, on November 22, 1902. He stopped Boyd's Malachi of Boston in 35 minutes, at Plum Island, Massachusetts, October 12, 1904. Colby Spring Cub 1894 Sire, Racine Sam, Dam. Grave weight of Best de Racine. 22 pounds owned by John P. Colby. Newburyport, Massachusetts. Spring beat Jim Gilligan's crib in 3 hours and 15 minutes, in Boxford, Massachusetts, April 19, 1897. 
Fernando Tegel's Twister created by John P. Colby, Newburyport, Massachusetts. Owned by Fernando Tegel, Cordoba. Mexico Twister has been an undefeated champion and 50 to 52 pound champion of Mexico for about 12 years now. Webster's Joker whelped in 1914 Sire, Colby's Bunch, Dam, Colby's Roadie Pit Weight, 43 pounds. Created by John P. Colby, Newburyport. Massachusetts. Owned by W.J. Webster, Jr., Columbia, Tennessee. The Joker won over Con Feely's Big Dog, Al, of Chicago, 111, in 51 minutes, at Nashville, Tennessee, April 29, 1917. Colby's Major whelped in December. 1896 Sir. Teddy's White, Dam. Weight of Colby's Pansy Pit. 36 pounds created and owned by John P. Colby, Newburyport, Massachusetts. Major 1 over Joe of Providence of Barney Fagan, R.I., in 2 hours and 15 minutes, at Place Toe, New Hampshire, October 22, 1899. Pete Donovan and Pilot. 2 degrees Pete Donovan has been a breeder of American Pit Bull Terriers for nearly 40 years. Pete has one of the largest kennels in the country and is reputed to send more winners than any man in the country. In addition to raising dogs, Pete has been connected with the Erie, Pennsylvania Fire Department for some time and has been very active in the line of fire prevention in his community. WHD Vote and John P. Colby WHD Vos and John P. Colby E. are indebted to J.C. Waller, Jr., of Cambridge, Massachusetts, for this beautiful photo of W.H.D. Vose and John P. Colby, taken years ago. Mr. You and Mr. Colby have been close friends for over a quarter of a century. Mr. Vose, who resides in Lawrence, Massachusetts, has enjoyed a successful career in local politics. His interest in dogs, however, never waned in any of the heated campaigns he participated in. He has several excellent dogs and can be proud of his breeding. He has always been a critic of gameness and has spared no expense to own the best. Mr. Colby has been one of the most successful breeders ever since the pit dog was called to this country. He bred, bred and sold several thousand dogs during the 47 years he operated a kennel. He claims to have sold more bloodhounds than any man in America. This record is a source of pride and apparently has no equal. Mr. Colby shipped dogs to all parts of the world and found a good market for them in Mexico, where dog fighting is a prominent sport. In addition to breeding dogs, he has developed a variety of dead game birds and breeds hundreds of them each year. He has a ready market for all the surplus stock. He also makes and sells a conditioning machine, or treadmill, which is illustrated and described elsewhere in the book. Mr. and Mrs. John P. Colby are active and in good health. They raised a family of seven children. Five sons and two daughters. Only two of the children are interested in dogs. The treadmill or conditioning machine illustrated is a treadmill or conditioning machine used to condition dogs for boxing competition or to exercise any breed of dog. This particular type is manufactured and sold by John P. Colby, Newburyport, Massachusetts. Mr. Colby has distributed them for years and sells them to breeders of all breeds. They are ideal for use and are particularly adapted for use in large cities where it is sometimes inconvenient to give a dog adequate exercise. They are essential to properly training a dog for pit purposes because they build muscle, stamina and develop wind. All dogs require a certain amount of exercise to ensure good health, a healthy appetite and a long life.
The treadmill is a remedy for the situation and the dogs enjoy working on it. This particular treadmill runs smoothly and noiselessly. It is constructed of wood and the floor is carpeted to protect your foot pads. They are beautifully finished and last indefinitely. This was the fourth part of Joseph L. Colby's audiobook. Sign up so you don't miss the fifth part. My name is Rodolfo and I thank you all for every like and comment. God bless you all. I went.